Welcome everyone to today's webinar. We're going to get started in about a minute. We are here at Koch University in Istanbul, Turkey, and we're very lucky to have today a group of our students from Azerbaijan. Today's webinar, uh, it's asking a very simple yet very rich question, which is what it's like to be an Azerbaijani student at Koch University. So thank you everyone who has registered and I know you're joining from different parts of um, Azerbaijan. Uh, whilst we wait for everyone to join and to get to the, the question and answer part and you get to meet our student uh, panel for today, I'm going to take the opportunity to very briefly show uh, a short video about our campus for those of you who might not be familiar with our university yet or you have just started to find out more about it through our website. By the way, uh, my name is Melissa Abache. I'm the Director of International Student Recruitment here at Koch University. And I'm also joined by my colleague, Efe Jarlik, uh, who is responsible for all of our marketing and recruitment activities in Azerbaijan. Um, so he will also, uh, you know, might be able to answer some questions later on. So I'm just gonna check very briefly uh, our attendee list. And I think we should be able to start just in one more minute. So with that, uh, we have a very beautiful campus and that's why we always like to show it everywhere we go because it is amazing. Unfortunately, we, we are not able to be on our campus since last March because of, as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has meant that many universities in Turkey deliver their education and their instruction online or in some type of blended format that has been the case for us. So unfortunately, you know, we well, for most of us, we have not been able to be in our campus for a long time, but hopefully, you know, we are really are crossing of our fingers that the situation improves and we're able to be back there by, by the fall. Um, you can see more pictures and videos and a campus tour, a virtual campus tour on our website, and we will show the details um, before we finish today's webinar. So um, as more people join, we just want to give some practical housekeeping kind of information. So please know that the webinar is being recorded and you will receive the webinar video one day later. You will receive an email from Zoom that will contain a link where you can watch the video on our YouTube channel. What we're going to do today, is because we have, you know, a, a very diverse group of students from Azerbaijan from different uh, majors and stages in terms of their their academic journey. Um, we want to make sure that you have the chance to ask them what, it, what their experience has been like from the moment they decided to apply to Coach University until where they are now and maybe even their plans for the future. So to type your questions, we kindly ask you to do that on the Q&A section of your screen. We also have the chat, but we'll use that to broadcast messages for the whole group. We also ask you to please type one question at a time to make sure that we answer all of them. And if you wish, we would prefer if you type your question in English, but you can also type it in Azerbaijani and Russian. Um, I'm not a, a Turkish or of course like Azerbaijani speaker. So this is where I will ask for help from our students as well to read the questions that are not typed in English. If you have individual questions about our admissions process, um, what I would like you to please do is to visit our website, which is international.ku.edu.tr, or you can also email us at study at ku.edu.tr so we can send you very detailed information about the program or programs that you're interested in, either at the graduate or undergraduate level. So I think it's okay for us to um, get started with the main uh, activity for today. So we are extremely lucky to have amazing students from Azerbaijan who not only are excellent academically, but also, you know, are very generous with their time and their wish to help others who might be wondering about applying to Koch University. And uh, these are the students who are with us today. You can also see them on your screen. I will close my presentation so that we can see them all um, more clearly. So today we have Aishan Abdullayeva, who is an undergrad in international relations, um, Zainab Ibrahimli, who is a major in business administration, 
Farid Jafarli, also a major in business administration, Fasil Shiraliev, um, an undergraduate major in economics, Jamila Gadimova, uh, who is an undergrad in psychology, Narmin Abasova from business administration. We have quite a few students from business administration, so it will be good to compare and contrast uh, their experiences. Um, Aishan Ibrahimova, uh, who interestingly, interestingly, it's a double major in psychology and media and visual arts. So for those of you wondering what it's like to do a double major, challenges, advantages, um, this is the person that can help answer those questions. We also have um, students from our College of Science, College of Engineering and School of Medicine. So these are Raul Abdullayev from our Molecular Biology and Genetics program. Javidan Osmanli from our School of Medicine. And um, I think Altun has joined, or he will join if not um, uh, soon, Altun Hassanli from Computer Engineering. So thank you um, all of you for joining us today. And what we're gonna do now is, um, I'm going to, I think, let me just check if we have any other joiners. Okay. So um, the idea for today is that we start reading your questions. Um, before that, if you might be a bit shy about writing questions right away, I'm going to briefly ask our student panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, maybe you can talk about uh, when, did, which year you joined Coach University. Um, I'm going to start the, the, the round of questions um, with one of my favorite questions, which is what is your favorite class so far? or what has been your favorite class or course so far and why. Um, th this is in random order as I see you in my screen. So I'm going to ask uh, Raul to maybe go first to introduce yourself and tell us what has been your favorite uh, course or class so far. Um, yes, um, as you kindly introduced me, my name is Raul Abdullayev, a major in molecular biology and genetics. I joined the university in the fall of 2019. And my favorite course, despite it being online, is probably biochemistry, which I took the last semester, because um, this was when I felt a very big difference between high school level curriculum and college level curriculum, extremely detailed, uh, rigorous. And um, yeah, that's when you know that you're in the a uh, league of big boys right now and girls. Who, who was your professor in that course? Uh, Halil Kabakli. Mm, yes. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Raul. I'm gonna now ask uh, Javidan, who I see next uh, on my screen to introduce himself and tell us what has been your favorite course so far. Hello everybody. My name is Javidan Osman, as introduced. I'm second year medical student right now. And my best course so far is anatomy, which I took this semester. And if you ask why, I mean, it's uh, obvious, like learning the structure of the body is so interesting. And did I forget something? I, I joined uh, in fall 2019 as well. As well. Very good. Um, did you take the anatomy course online? Yes. Okay, all right. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I want to know more about that later, so yeah. Thank you, Javidan. Uh, I'm going to ask now uh, Zainab. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Zainab Ibrahim Lee, and I joined COACH in fall 2019. Uh, I'm majoring in business administration, but also I started uh, last semester my double major in economics. And uh, my favorite course was probably uh, one of ASU courses. It was named uh, cities and urban film it was very really interesting because i mean we watched films and we gathered to discuss it and our essays was based on films which i really love and i'm a fan of so that was probably the most interesting one that's great so that's that's a course that it's within the the core core i mean the, yeah. the it's within yeah. core program yeah perfect all right thank you Zainab. i'm gonna ask now aishan to introduce herself there are two Aishans, which one? Yeah, yeah. Aishan Abdullayeva, sorry. Oh, okay. uh, my name is Aishan Abdullayeva. I'm an international relations second year student. I also this semester, I applied for 
um, double major with media and visual arts and accepted. And I attended a coach university in 2019. And my favorite course in at coach university is um, a social um, popular cultures. It was SOSG course. And why? Because I learned there many cultures about the cultures, about their traditions. Uh, okay. Yes. Perfect. Did you learn about Turkish culture a bit as part of that? Or? Yes, of course. Turkish music, especially. Oh, okay. yes, Arabesque. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> yeah. Great, great. Thank you, Aisha. I'm going to ask now uh, Naramin to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Narmin Basova, and I joined Coach in fall 2019. And since this semester, I started to double major in business and economics together. And I think that one of my favorite courses was the same as Zainab said, it was CTS in Orbon Film because we took it together. So it was fun to compare our essays to each other. And we had different discussions because we we're in different classes, but discussions were like very good in both classes in both times. So I think that that is the course that I enjoyed the most because we had a lot of chance to talk and express our opinions about different subjects. That's why I enjoyed it the most. Great, thank you. Was there a particular film that you wrote an essay about that you still kind of, that you remember, that sort of stuck with you? I remember the movie, but I don't think that I remember the title of the movie. So. Okay, <laughs> that happened. I don't want to put you in the spot. If you remember later, let us let us know. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so now I'm going to ask Aishan Ibrahimova to please introduce herself. Hello, my name is Aishan Ibrahimova. I guess I'm the like one of the first students there who started coach. I started in 2015. I actually graduated from coach in 2019 from media and visual arts, but I did a U-turn and applied to double major in my last year, last semester. And I like started to study psychology. Now uh, that's my last semester in coach, hopefully, because it's my sixth year and just it's been a long journey. Uh, in terms of my favorite course, it's been Abnormal Psychology, which I took in online um, last semester from Jarana Jartuk. Great. Um, it, it's very interesting to hear your journey, and I will ask you more questions um, about that. Okay. Thank you, Aishan. Um, now I'm going to ask Jamila to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Jamila Gadimova. I'm also a sophomore. By the way, if, if there's any problem with my connection, just please inform me because I'm having problems for the past two days. Um, yeah, so I'm a sophomore psychology student, um, and I also um, joined Quatch in fall 2019. Um, in terms of my, of my favorite course, that's a really troubling question for me because I'm the type of person who decides between two t-shirts for two hours. So um, it's very hard to decide on a favorite course. I would say all of the psychology and um, philosophy involving courses I took because I'm the passionate psychology philosophy person uh, since my high school years. So all of them just have a different spot in my heart. So I'd say all of them and with the perfect professors we have, I'd say all of them. Wow, that's great. Great to hear that. So uh, thank you very much for sharing that, Jamila. <laughs> Now I'm going to ask Fazil to please introduce himself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Fazil Shiraliev. I'm a third year student, actually. I joined 2018 and I'm studying economics as well as business. I forgot to tell you. So I'm doing a double major as well. My favorite course, actually, it's not related to econ, although I like it. It's called, um, it's also a sociology course. It's called globalization. I liked it because, you know, there were so many opinions. There was no right or wrong. Everyone argued. It was like super chaotic. And I had the chance to meet around like 30 international students. So I'm very grateful for that course. That's, That's great. why I like it, yeah. Was it, was it a mix of um, like exchange students? Uh, yes, exchange, yeah, full-time internationals. So, yeah. and like third, fourth year students. So I met a lot of people. What, what was the most controversial topic within within the course when you were debating? Do you remember? Uh, there, there were a lot. It was about politics, like about Palestine, you know, like there were a lot of different opinions. So, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. that's right. 118, exactly. Yeah, Jaida. That one. <laughs> yeah. 
It was nice. So I guess that's a recommendation for those of you who might not have taken it yet to, you know, yeah, that's nice. to consider taking it. Thank you very much, Fazil. Uh, now, last but not least, I would like to ask Farid to please introduce himself. Hello, everyone. My name is Farid Jafarli. Uh, my major is business administration. And I am senior uh, in my last semester. Hopefully, I'm going to graduate. But I don't want uh, credit as online. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me, let's see. Uh, my favorite course is marketing strategy. And also, also, I'm working in our company as a marketing director. So thank you. Great. Well, well done. And yeah, like, we hope that we can attend your graduation this year as well. So yeah, Oops. Uh, yeah that's all we, we would like. So um, again, I would like to um, repeat for the attendees that you can type your questions on the Q&A icon that you see at the bottom of your screen. Um, if our participants continue to be shy, I will continue with some questions or I don't know if Epe, if you have questions for our panel. Since, I mean, you- sure, I, can, I can continue the uh, series of questions since we got a question from our uh, attendees. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you so much to be here today. I would like to ask like, uh, what was the most motivation like you prefer to apply for Coach University than when you get accepted, you decided to enroll Coach University. What was your main uh, reason to, to select Coach University and did you get satisfied with that expectations when you start Coach University? Oh, you're raising hands, okay. Uh, you can jump in as you wish. There is no need to, since we introduce all of you, you can jump in and start talking. So maybe to organize this, I think Jamila has kept her uh, yeah, yeah. hand up. So Jamila, we can start. Yeah, let's go on Jamila. I raised my hand because my story is a little um, extraordinary. My mom is a coach graduate, actually. Um, she graduated in 2001, I think, or 2000, some, some place there. Um, and so I had a chance to come visit Koch because my mom got her um, uh, graduate card from Koch and that there were, that she could, you know, make use of all the um, campus at Koch, etc. So we decided to visit it with my brother and my brother took the summer course at ELC um, and all that. Then I had a chance to come visit. At that time, I was, you know, planning on becoming a law student. So Koch wasn't that of much preference for me. I didn't want to focus on Turkish law, actually, honestly. But later when I decided to uh, major in psychology, I thought, yeah, well, I like the campus. My mom has pretty well memories and, you know, it's still a very good university, so why not? So this, the story with my mom is just, you know, a little different, I think. So I, I guess she was happy when, when, you know, you told her that you wanted to, to apply to coach, yeah? Or did yeah, well, actually, she wanted me to when, um, when I was deciding upon universities, both my grandfather other because you know her daughter was a college student so he was like yeah it's a good university you should go I'm like come on 20 years past things have changed but um she was happy to you know we we put we have a picture where we have both of our cards she has her graduate and student cards put together and I have my student card and a photo of them so those, those are like you know cute little things that it brings but yeah amazing who else there were some hands as well please jump in yeah, I actually chose Coach because I checked the rankings of the universities in Istanbul in for 2015 year, and the Coach was one of the highest. So that was the reason that I chose Coach actually. And uh, you should be happy that you continue for six years. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I, I right? am. <laughs> okay. I think Narmin also had uh, raised her hand. Yes, I had a chance to come and visit the campus. Uh, a year before I actually applied. So seeing the campus and I had like several universities in my mind and I applied to several universities, but after I saw the campus, I loved it a lot. So I decided to actually choose Koch because of the beautiful campus. Farid. And also I want to add that uh, I, uh, I was in summer school at Koch University as a child, ELC names so that's why i liked the coach university and i joined 
Yeah, that's what my brother attended like some years ago. He's he's 13 now. I think he was like 10 at the time. So it's probably the same course. Okay, so um, we do have some questions coming in now from participants. I'm gonna close my microphone because I have a new baby and he's now crying. So I'm gonna ask Efe to please start going through the questions. Sure, sure, I'm starting right now. And please guys jump in and if you want to add something or let's answer them together. And whoever has something additional to, to say as an answer to those questions, please jump in. Uh, I'm starting with Riza Husseinov's question. Thank you, Riza, for joining today and for your question. What is it like to study computer engineering in Koch? Unfortunately, we do not have a computer engineering student at the moment, I guess, right? Uh, yeah. But maybe, maybe Raul, you can answer as a science student because most of your first year uh, courses are similar. Then we can continue with what you say, Raul. Your mic is closed, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, honestly, I don't think I'm qualified to answer. Uh, I think the uh -huh. curriculum is very good. I plan to double major in computer engineering, but with molecular biology curriculum and computer engineering is just too overwhelming. So I uh -huh. did not do that. Sure, let me, let me uh, answer as with my knowledge, like from computer engineering, it's a very uh, diverse program based on your interest areas, like, there are lots of Czech programs in it. Like if you're interested in, for example, in uh, like of coding or software engineering, part of computer engineering, like developing coding and that kind of expertise, you can follow a track with the selective courses in computer engineering major program. And you can graduate with the full expertise of the software part of the computer engineering. Or you can, if you're interested in, we have an amazing crypto cryptography uh, faculty members in our computer engineering, even for graduate schools, we have a very nice and uh, very straightforward cryptography laboratory. And you can con uh, concentrate on crypto cryptography. I'm having hard times to spell it. And uh, there are also other things like software uh, or security part of the computer engineering or the general computer engineering uh, courses, which is integrated with physics or uh, the site science departments, it really depends on your interest areas and you can follow any of them or one or two of them together during your undergraduate education. And if you're really interested in having a, a master degree or continue with PhD, it's a very nice place to start as a coach undergrad computer engineering program. And if you still have questions regarding on the curriculum and everything, please send us an email. I type our email address on the page on the chat panel. If you can send us an email with your specific questions about computer engineering uh, curriculum, we can, uh, we can answer your questions in details or we can lead to some existing students that you can also ask your questions for a real student studying that. Also, sorry to jump in. Um, we have recently both uh, Coach University, if you type Coach University on YouTube and also our Coach University International Admissions, we now have a series of videos which are kind of a podcast, let's say, narrated by our professors. And there is one for each program. So we have um, a video for our computer engineering program um, in which it talks about, you know, what is it like to study? The program what's the difference uh, by doing that in a research intensive university what are the type of um, internship opportunities that are there for computer engineering majors as well so i invite you to, uh, to check our, our youtube channel um, i have a there is a question here that uh, got my attention uh, which you know, uh, because we do have a lot of business administration students today in our panel, uh, which are the most important subjects uh, that business administration offers. So in your opinion, from all of, you know, the courses you have taken so far or that you have seen are coming up to you in your curriculum, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about them for our business administration majors. Who would like to start? Uh, I may. Yeah. Uh, so I think the main subjects are all connected with math. So we have like finance mathematics, we have statistics, we have calculus, and also like accounting courses are also connected with numbers and stuff. So I think like students which are good with numbers and like 
they have that kind of brain uh, would be like would be easy for them if they are good in this area they can definitely apply for business administration and uh, be for convenient for them Great. thank you very much Zainab. anyone else from business administration who would like to add sorry for jumping in i wanted to add something on top of that so there was a question about computer engineering if i'm not wrong someone ask that so you can actually connect the majors within the courses i took a course it's it's an intro course to e-commerce probably you guys know what it is so basically all the websites amazon the digital marketing it has to do with that and if you're good at programming you can actually create websites and you can connect your business knowledge with your computer engineering skills and actually succeed as well so there's a lot of space for it Mm -hmm. a lot of creative ideas with the courses and double major and everything. That's, that's great. Um, and for example, you took that course as a double, I mean, because you, you, you were doing a double major, mm -hmm. but okay. That's great. Okay. Um, there is another question here, uh, which I think Raul started to allude to in his introduction. How do the courses you took in coach differ from the ones you took while you were in high school? So for example, when we, let, let's start maybe with maths, you know, because uh, we all have taken maths in high school. Uh, and then in your first year at coach, you take, and maybe even to a second year, you take math courses. So, um, I mean, it's not a kind of, maybe it's not an engaging subject, but it's an important one, I think. Would anyone like to offer their opinion? Yes, Aishan. Well, actually it was very different from the ones like I took personally in high school. Uh, I only had one math class because of my um, majors. Uh, it was statistics. Like, I don't know, there was just really little commonalities with the ones I took in high school because it was mainly statistics. And the ones that we took in Azerbaijan, like I graduated from the high school in Azerbaijan, like didn't involve statistics that much. That's why like they were really different. And the other courses, um, in media and visual arts, nor in media and visual arts, like neither in psychology, there wasn't any commonalities, like everything was new for me. And as a molecular biology student, I want to add that the number of math courses for biology major was unexpectedly large in a pleasant way, because you can see how it pays off um, in more difficult courses in biology. Um, so at this point, I've taken four courses in mathematics, uh, despite being second year molecular biology student. Um, and in that sense, the program is very multifaceted. Great. Thank you, Raul, for offering that. Uh, what about other courses? For example, um, I don't know which type of uh, curriculum you followed in high school, but you might have taken also some business courses in high school or uh, more like humanities oriented courses, language courses that you are you have also now taking at Coach. Uh, how did they differ? Jamila? I have an exact answer for this. So um, I actually, in my high school years, I graduated from the IB program, International Baccalaureate. I'm not sure about our attendees, but you know, just in case there's anyone. Um, so my courses were all um, very intense and they were actually you know, pretty much university level. What I think, and I actually had a chance to take a philosophy course uh, during my high school education, which I am now continuing uh, in my undergraduate studies. Um, the main difference, I think, is that whatever program you're studying in high school, you're always getting prepared for a standardized exam. This is either SAT, this is IELTS, this is IB, whatever it is. So when you're studying, I think the focus after a certain point shifts from what you're learning to more of what your exam expects from you. So that, um, to me personally, that was a preventative thing because I couldn't always read whatever I wanted to, especially in a philosophy course. I had to, you know, prepare for my writing and for my exam. When you're in university, it's not... Um, again, you're having exams, midterms, that's okay, but it's it's not that much of, you know, a standardized thing to get prepared for the format, as long as you know the, the program, you're all set with, um, and also the, the difference between the attitudes of your professors in university and high school, that's also a major difference, so um, it actually, you know, um, puts like the, the spot in your well-being, so you again approach the course in a different way, so that's also a major difference. 
Thank you. That's a that's a key point, you know, to make. It's like, what are you preparing for in those courses in high school versus in at, at university? Would anyone else like to? Adit, please go. I would like to add that uh, I graduated from a government school, but I would like to say the ones who are going to graduate from a government school. In my times, uh, the government schools are not uh, as perfect as the private schools. So I had really difficult times in my freshman years. So I developed myself uh, learning by internet or my friends. And I would like to pre give advice my friends who are going to uh, study in Koch University, uh, who are studying in uh, high school, the uh, government school. Uh, you must develop yourselves and you, mu you must have self-belief. If you do, you can uh, graduate. Because I have lots of friends who are coming from Azerbaijan to the Koch University. They have really uh, difficult uh, times. They can't study. Some of them uh, leave, uh, left our university. So because of the government uh, school. That's why the courses are really uh, different from uh, high school and uh, Koch University for me. What was, what, what, what was the most difficult part for you in your freshman year? Uh, for example, um, the math uh, use 101. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the name is, I don't know the name, uh, but it's the mathematics is really difficult for me because I have in uh, such kind of things in my university life is school right. life yeah that's why right. i mean i i've heard that's a difficult course for everyone <laughs> regardless of uh, which school system they came from but i i do take your point and thank you for offering that advice because it, it is important to know that you you will need some extra kind of work you know to be done on your own yes. uh, the university of course offers support for example we have office of learning and teaching where we have mentors for specific courses there's a library with you know online resources and books um, and then of course now there's so many resources online that um, you know to to catch up you know in, in where we have gaps so thank you for for that advice right um, we have a question here uh, because, you know, uh, medicine, I know it's important and we just have one representative from medicine. I'm skipping some questions, but I'll come back to them. Um, so then this is my question in my head. How can you do your practical lessons in medicine so far, uh, Javidan? Um, right now, unfortunately, we can't see any cadaver or we can't go to labs and, I mean, see and touch the bones, for example, and see the structure. But... Uh, the good thing that Coach University offers, they are, uh, they are uh, equipping these uh, online programs, softwares, special softwares developed for, for example, histology. We see the microscopic image and we can even move around and see what's um, the exact structure and all the other structures. Then there are some anatomy websites, uh, anatomy softwares that Coach bought, I think, this year, especially because it's online. And Oh, we all do these things from softwares, but the professors are saying that we're gonna, when we come back to university, for like, I hope so. Uh, next year, uh, we're gonna see all of them, um, all the things that we haven't seen yet. We're gonna see them in the labs as well before the university starts. So I guess, uh, especially for medicine, we will need to go on uh, late August or something to yeah. Yeah, keep up with the program. But uh, till now, for example, I saw. We call them blocks. So we have one block and there we have seven classes, anatomy, physiology, histology, and all, all the stuff. And in one block, for example, we're talking about musculoskeletal system and we see the softwares. But till now, I, uh, what can I say? I mean, it's nice really. Like with the softwares, even with the softwares, for example, we can learn everything. I mean, it's not limited. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. I think it, it does matter to see the structure and touch it, but still you learn, you can learn like this as well. Yeah. And I guess, um, again, hopefully by the time you get to your um, clinical courses, which is from fourth year onwards at the hospital, you will be able to touch people <laughs> and, and cure them. <laughs> so that's, that's yeah. the idea. Right now, uh, as I know, fourth, fifth and sixth year students who are in hospital, they are going to hospital. I yeah. mean, there's yeah. no... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they haven't. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're going there. Yeah, great. 
Thank you very much, Javida. So I'm gonna go back to some of our questions. Um, there is a question here about computer engineering, but I will make it kind of more general because it might be also in the minds of some participants, which is um, here I was asking as a computer engineering student, but I would say as a student, can I work while studying in Koch University? Have any of you had that experience of working uh, perhaps part-time remotely on campus, off campus, whilst you um, have been studying? Um, I would like to jump in. If okay, let's no start with mind. Raul and then um, who else? Yeah. Um, okay. Other panelists can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think it depends on the definition of working because you need to consider the Turkish labor law and it's pretty strict about non-citizens working. So although we see many working opportunities for students on campus, there is usually a disclaimer that uh, only Turkish citizens are eligible. So in the sense of getting money for what you're doing, I think it's unlikely, not because of university, but because of the countrywide laws. Um, but if you mean working um, as in non-studying practice, then it's very much possible because uh, professors across all departments are open-minded for cooperation with undergraduates. And um, also we have some um, companies coming in from time to time offering internships. For example, last semester, there was an online coding competition among uh, computer engineering students on lead code. And the winner of that coding competition got an internship in some Turkish IT company that sponsored uh, the uh, competition. And um, there are numerous such examples. Um, but yeah, in terms of money, that's unlikely. Thank you for pointing that out, Daniel. Yeah, it's true. I mean, there are there are limitations for international students in Turkey to work uh, in the sense that the, it, it is possible, but you need a, a, a parallel uh, work permit is our, you know, the, the last information we have is this, but it is difficult to have companies um, go through, you know, the, the hassle of obtaining a work permit for international students. Has anyone, uh, for example, tried to work remotely? Like, or not? I think Aishan uh, had raised her hand. Yeah, I didn't work, but I did three internships while studying. It was challenging because like, especially in the final exam weeks or if, like during the midterms, like it was impossible to go from like to do an internship and like to prepare for the exams at the same time. So I will um, personally advise to do internships or all the other work in the summer or I don't know, in on the spring breaks, like. I don't know for the break time, but it, it was just really, really, really challenging to do the work and the um, studying at the same time because the cur curriculum was like intense, especially if you want higher GPA. So, like, thank you, Aishan. And I, I will correct you though, you did work. This is just that you did unpaid work, but you absolutely did work doing your internship. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Jamila? Yeah, I just want to add something. I'm actually pretty um, miserable and frustrated about the Turkish laws about us, you know, for word permit and all those things. But um, one thing I want to add to Raul's and Aishan's comments, there are also clubs at the university um, for every career that you're pursuing. Um, you can also approach those clubs and you can start working. I am working at the psychology club, for example, in the executive board. And we are, you know, organizing several events and I'm ahead of a certain team of the, the team of social responsibility. So clubs are actually a place where you can, you know, really learn the concepts of time management, stress management, you know, organization of events and all those things. So that's just a sincere advice. You know, if you want to work, but if money is not the key, then you can approach the clubs as well. Great. Thank you for that advice. Um, that was one of my questions that I would like to ask you if we have time after the participants' questions about the student clubs. Um, please, for participants, know we know that you have typed some questions uh, which are more about tuition, about um, international Olympiads in terms of admissions. We're going to leave those to the end to make sure that we ask the questions that are more related to our students' experience. So please know we're not ignoring you. We're just kind of um, moderating it so that we leave them to the until the end of uh, today's webinar. 
Um, there was a similar question. Does coach provide any chance to practice my knowledge during undergraduate study in big companies? So for those of you who have done internships, maybe you can share a bit of inform. I mean, yeah, your experience of doing internships. Uh, if you can disclose the names of where you did those internships of, or not. Um, how was the process of finding those internships? Um, did you go to the career center? Did you find them on their own, own through your networks? Uh, what was the, the process? Um, so I, I oh, sorry. Okay, I'll, this time I'll start with Fasil and then Aishan. Okay. So um, I haven't done an internship myself yet because it's been online for like how many? Like three semesters now? I wanted to, but I couldn't. Because you need, you can actually get money if I'm not wrong, but you need to get a, is my internet turning off? I can hear you, Fazil. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Ah. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Ah, sorry, continue. yeah, it got stuck for a second, okay. So, yeah. um, about the work permit as well, I'm gonna like add a little thing, not gonna take too much time. So, I think you need a Mavi card, or I don't know how it's called, because I wanted to be a TA, last semester and they said you can actually get paid but you need uh, a work permit so i think it's possible and about the big companies i have a friend not not we're not like that close she's like an acquaintance so she got uh, accepted to ishban kasa so she's in a business club it's called coach business club they went to a ishban kasa office they talked you know like you get sponsors for your events so they come and they make advertisements and all that and when she talked to them, they liked the way she talked. They liked uh, her knowledge and everything. They invited her to a separate interview and she actually got accepted for an internship. So it's actually possible. Mm -hmm. Well, as Jamila said, the, the clubs are important. So if you participate, you can get good opportunities for internships as well. Great. Um, there was also, a, a, if there is anyone else who would like to, Aishan, I think was going to share her experience. Um, actually like, as Fazil and Jamila mentioned, the clubs are really important to find because it gives the opportunity to meet with um, the CEOs of the different companies and like with different people. And also that there was events like business trip and uh, comp. Those are really important because like it, those events give a really big opportunity to meet with different people and you should be very active. And like uh, my personal um um the experience was that you should like go to the like people and take their cards and just send email without like like other than the club like you should do that work yourself if you want to do a good internship with in different places like you should be active and you should not be shy that's the i mean like the cue point absolutely true <laughs> yeah well uh, farid you were saying something Thing. Yeah, I was going to say, but uh, I think my friend says, all of them say it. But I would like to add that uh, without uh, joining any clubs, uh, I am a senior. I got intern in Deloitte company because of the uh, Coach University members and also GPA. So that I would like to say, studying hard and getting uh, good GPA is enough right did you did you um get any support from our career development center did you feel you need to or or not really no 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 okay that's that's good to know um very nice yeah, congratulations it's true. <laughs> you're gonna work very hard <laughs> yes yes yeah um, there's also a question about internships but in this case about summer internship opportunities in coach university for mechanical engineering students. So uh, we don't have a mechanical engineering student in our panel today, uh, but what we can tell you is for all engineering majors, it is um, mandatory or compulsory to do uh, a certain number of internships during the summer. So this is where, again, um, through the contacts that are offered or ideas for places to do internships from your professors, from the Career Development Center, um, you can, of course, um, find an internship. We do have examples of international students in engineering who have done internships both in Turkey and outside of Turkey, some of them in their home country, some of them in a third country. 
um, which they found again through different sources. So some of them through their own network, some of them through the, we have a, a database of uh, career opportunities, which is managed for by the Career Development Center, which is only accessible by Coach University students. So I hope that answers that question. Um, we have here a question which is more looking towards the future. And this is also interesting for me to know about from, from you guys, uh, especially those of you who are about to graduate or are you know halfway there. Uh, th there is someone here to say uh, that says, I want to study a master's degree in a top American or um, English university like MIT, Harvard, or Cambridge. And so I want to get high, even full scholarship from these highly prestigious universities for a master's degree. My question is how can Coach University help me on this topic? And what are the criteria for getting high scholarship from top universities for studying master's degree? I guess the second part of that question, it's you know, besides the scope of, of today, maybe we can do a separate webinar from with our alumni who are now at MIT, Harvard, and Cambridge of, about how they got there and how they got those scholarships. So that's a very good idea for a, a separate kind of session. But for those of you, for example, when you think about your future plans, are any of you considering, uh, you know, after graduation, doing a master's degree? And uh, if yes, then where are you thinking you would like to do that master's? I'm actually planning to do a master's degree. Probably um, I will do a gap year after university because I'm really exhausted, but in 2022 I'm planning to do I want to apply to like one of the top universities in America um, actually the the most important thing is your GPA like I I don't know if coach can contribute to that like it's your like own hard effort you put to your classes and also the good recommendations like you should because and, and that's why you should speak on classes be active and like to have good relationships with um teachers and like all this stuff in order to get good recommendations from them like that's two key important points and i would like to add to that i can't speak for all fields but again i'm from college of sciences molecular biology and in my field it's very important to show your research potential for master's degree at top universities. So whatever you're doing, besides drowning yourself in books, you also need to um, sign up for a research lab of some of your professors, because that's the way you're going to get a good recommendation letter, as Aishan said, like without showing your research potential, um, getting into those universities is virtually impossible. Excellent advice from uh, Aishan and Raul. Absolutely true. So, um, I mean, the, the, the advice you just gave completely applies to how our graduate programs uh, select candidates. So they look at research um, potent, I mean, research experience and skills gained so far in the undergrad studies and potential to cope with the, with the program GPA because it, it kind of demonstrates constant um, you know, effort to, in terms of academic uh, work and uh, and recommendations. So absolutely, the advice you, you gave is spot on. So um, we have a question here, which I guess will combine some of our panelists together. How, um, sorry, I think it, it jumped a bit. Uh -huh. How probably, probable is it to do a double major in molecular biology and genetics and media and visual arts and have excellent grades at the same time. So do you know any, any friends or classmates that have done a combination between, for example, College of Science and College of uh, Social Sciences and Humanity? Maybe not that exact combination, but I can. I, I'm. I think I'm the only person here who's not doing a double major. Okay. Um, I, I'm not, so you, you might not want to rely on my advice. But um, I've heard a lot of people doing double majors with um, very different colleges, and it's very hard. Uh, so to kind of cope with that, what I can advise and what um, I think many people are doing is looking for track programs. So it's not necessary to always go and do a double major. You know, um, most of our professors are, you know, just advising me now 
uh, don't do a double major just to do a double major. So if you're just interested in something, for example, as a psychology student, I was interested in marketing. I could go and do a marketing track program instead of, you know, a double major in business administration or a related field. I'm personally doing a track in cognitive and brain sciences because that's what I'm interested in. But you can look for track interdisciplinary track programs that could be easier and that could be you know, more efficient. You could graduate on time. That, that's great. Um, how and have you found the extra courses? Because then it means to do the track, you're taking extra uh, course load each semester. Um, well, my GPA is pretty high, so I, I have, I'm eligible to take extra courses. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking six courses. Uh, I recently applied to my track program, so I haven't started the, the courses yet. But my track program is specifically a psychology program. It's cognitive and brain sciences. So most of the courses there, I'm already obliged to take them. So, you know, it's not much of a handicap for me. And all the others, as you said, you know, I'm just covering up with extra courses. Right. Think yeah, I mean, I'm a molecular biology major, so it's kind of a thought experiment for me to incorporate MAVA major into my curriculum. And the only, like two things help here. First is that the fourth year at Coach is very flexible because you're not required to take any particular courses. You can take like four general electives and one area elective. And if you pack all those slots with um, media what was it? Uh, media and visual arts, right? With those courses, um, then that's one part of the job. And the second part of the job is that in coach, if you're double majoring, they are extending your scholarship to the fifth year. And uh, if you also take that fifth year and you pack the whole year with Marvel courses, then you can complete. Because I just look at the website and it's 16 additional courses. So without packing those last two years with uh, media and visual arts, it's not possible to do that, but it is possible. That's, that's great advice. So I think we have answered the question now. Um, and I, the, the thought that came to mind is that that would be an excellent science communicator. You know, somebody who can communicate, you know, somebody who has studied media and visual arts would be able to hopefully, you know, uh, be great at communicating complex uh, science and research uh, results, you know, methods, studies to a wider audience, uh, through what they learn in media and visual arts, hopefully. Um, we have a question here, which I had never heard before. Do you have facilities to practice gymnastics? Yes, actually we have. And also there, there are courses like um, Arts 201, which is like, I don't know the exact name, but it was like movements of, of something. Like it provided a good morning gymnastics especially if you take it at 8.30. So it was helpful. And also, I guess there should be some other classes too. Like um, there was fitness, yoga, um, and other UNIF courses, like which are also giving one credit. Okay. Like, um, I don't know if perhaps the person asking this was interested more in like competitive sort of Olympic level gymnastics. As far as I know, we don't have an Olympic or kind of yeah, uh, professional gymnastics team, sports team or yeah, uh, training, but we do have the facilities in the sports center. So thank you, Aishan, for helping to answer that. Um, there's a great question here. What are some of the challenges that you face at Coach University? And I'm going to close my mic because... We have noise and I'll ask Effort to moderate now. Sure. Uh, who would like to answer the questions, the most challenges you have already experienced? Please go on. Like for me, it was to find friends actually, because when I came like in 2015, there was only like seven Azerbaijani students. I didn't know anyone. I didn't do ELC and like, classes were in American program like in every class there are new like students and I wasn't an extroverted as I am now at that time so it was a really big challenge like first one month was I don't know was like kind of hell because I was all alone I couldn't interact with other people so that was the biggest challenge but after that like everything was okay besides the finals perfect does anyone else like have challenges was it that smooth for you it's amazing to 
Yeah. You can talk, you know, honestly, like the, the idea, the, the idea here is that you share your true experience, you know, so yeah. good, the, the good, the ugly, the bad, the, you know, all of it. So that doesn't matter. Please share your real experience. Any challenges you have faced until now? Uh, I want to add something, but it's not really about the social aspect, but about the academics, because the program is so different from our high schools. Uh, I can relate and the attendees, they'll understand what I mean. Like in our high schools in Azerbaijan, there's a class of like 20 people and you depends on the school. I'm, I'm not sure about others. I studied in a public school. So it's like 11, 12 years with the same people. So you get used to them, as Aishan said. But here you just, you go to a class, one person, then the other class, another completely new 30 people. I mean, if you look at it, it's good. When, but when you just came, you, you can't feel shy and all that. But it's okay, you can come to us if I don't graduate by then. You can come to us, you know, we can help and uh, talk and everything. We can introduce you to other people, so it's going to be easier for you. And now it's quite easy because I was actually quite surprised in a good way because last year, I think, yeah, in 2019, how many, you probably know, like 50 Azerbaijani students got admitted or what? Like a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. yeah, because when I came, it was similar to Aishan's situation. It was like 10, 15 people. It, was, it wasn't that much, so... But about the academics, you have to do everything yourself. doesn't mean you have to be afraid or scared. I'm not trying to say it's difficult or anything, but you have to rely on yourself. There are good professors that can explain the, uh, themselves very well. Every professor is very well educated, but um, there are classes that have like 200 students. It's a huge auditorium. So the professor won't have time to answer everyone's questions. You can come after class, go to their office hours or to call. It's a place where you can go to the students and get some help, but uh, you should rely on yourselves. So don't be you know, surprised. You have to put some extra effort when you study and you're going to be successful. Also manage your time. You're not going to have any problems. Fazil, uh, I, this is a, actually a kind of personal question I have we got based on what you answer right now, because I, I remember my college uh, first year in my college time, I have the same difficulties, like it was challenging to deal with some things like following the class or maintaining the questions or assignments and everything. And when I done with like those things become uh, normal things for me, when I done with this challenge, then I feel like, like, okay, it's make me a little bit grow up. It's make me a little bit more responsible or something. Yeah. I just get over with my childhood and everything. Did you experience the same? Is, is, can we call it something good for your personal uh, characteristics or like your personal development like i think it, same? It, it forced me to become more mature that's for uh -huh. sure because when i first came i was like yeah okay i yeah, we had a class maybe you took it everyone like when you're a freshman it's called alice it's about you know getting used to living it like it's kind of help it helps you to get what's it called i forgot the word to adapt to the uh -huh. university life and they said it's called uh, honeymoon, honeymoon state. Like the first month, you know, uh, coach, you know, the first week, the second week, I'm having fun, I'm meeting people. But when you realize that you actually have to study, you have to sit and read the books, it's not as pleasant in the beginning. But w w as you said, when you get used to it, plus you live alone. Like it doesn't mean it's bad, but you have to face it. You live on campus, you wash your stuff. Like in the beginning, I couldn't even, even wash anything when the washing machine something got stuck i couldn't dry it you know i was like shocked i didn't know what to do but when i got used to it it actually made me more responsible and i felt more powerful you know like uh, in a sense that my mental state and the you know the nervous system and everything you feel more resilient to all the stress you get so you can actually just don't don't give up that's the advice i'm going to give you like sometimes right. you get a feeling uh, i think i got it in my second year second semester Everything was going smooth, but like at one point I was like, am I really doing something right? Maybe I should change this. Maybe. Like, don't get, uh, you know, you can ask yourself questions. Maybe some people change their majors. It's fine. But don't, just don't give up. You know, like if you have doubts, just stay on your path and everything's going to be all right. When you get used to it, as you said, uh, like the system and how the classes work, you're going to be fine. Yeah, nice one, one thing I want to mention to our audience today is that uh, one reason we're extremely lucky to have these students in our panel today is that they're amongst our most successfully and successful 
uh, students in terms of their academics, in terms of their GPA. So um, please know that all of them are extremely, you know, hardworking students and have done very well in their majors right now. So um, I think that the challenges you faced, uh, you know, in terms of academics, uh, I guess you have all, you know, managed them and adapted and um, thrived uh, after you faced those challenges. Yeah, uh, best examples. Yeah, um, there is a question here, which I'm not sure about. So maybe you, you guys can also help to answer. Does coach has a debate club? If not, can I start my own club? I know we had one. I'm not sure if we have this year. There is a debate club. Uh, and I think my friends are in it mm -hmm. or they're president of it. I'm not sure. There is a debate club. So, and you can actually start your own club. I think my friend told me it was kind of an inappropriate club. It's a funny story. So it was like four years ago, there was a guy, he wanted to start a Shisha club. I don't know what, what he was going to do. He went to the Dean. It's like, in theory, you can do it. You can say, I'm going to start like a poker club, but obviously you can't, but you can go to the Dean of students and uh, propose and say what you're gonna do, the mission, uh, what's the club about, and anything you want, you can do. So there's total freedom about it. So you can create any club you want, but there is a debate club already, so. Great. But uh, isn't the debate club in Turkish? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I think we do have a debate it club. Is. Can, yeah. I think it so, is. So, there is, so there what is I would like to say, what I would like to say, the thing about clubs is that all of them are initiated by uh, students the faculties themselves do not create them. And so students have a lot of liberty in how to manage them. And because the majority of students are Turkish, the majority of clubs are naturally in Turkish. There is a separate um, club of international students, but it doesn't have specific direction like uh, debates or I don't know, ecology. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I did not participate in it, but these specific clubs, uh, they are in Turkish. And so um, if, you, if you're planning to engage in them, uh, I mean, um, of course it's all uh, about communication. So you may talk to the members and say, uh, guys, I don't understand Turkish, can you speak in English? But um, be prepared that some, your communication to some extent is gonna happen in Turkish. But then again, you can initiate your own club. And I think the registration is somewhat formal, like, um, Fazil said that you go to the dean and there's also another way because every year there's an application cycle to create clubs. So you apply through Coach University website and of course you state your mission, you have to pass some criteria, but that information is available online. Great. Thank you very much, Roland. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, um, that's something that as a university, because I, I think, you know, we are a young university um, Aishan is probably one of our oldest, I um, mean, earliest, let's say, um, Azerbaijani students. So the, the international student body at the university really started to grow, not only in number, but in diversity only in the last couple of years. So, you know, we will see the effects of that in terms of new clubs, clubs that, you know, are um, managed and that do all of their activities in, in English, for example. I think in a couple of years more. So, but again, it's up to the students to take the initiative and and you know and, and set up this club. So there is something similar to that question here, uh, which is directed about you know what is the best thing about being an Azerbaijanian student at Koch University? Do you gather frequently? Do you feel as a family? Is there a club for Azerbaijani students? I think there isn't. Will there be one? Could there be one? That's a question for you. Of course, you're not representing all Azerbaijani students, but you know, in your opinion. Like in my years, actually, when I first started the university, as I mentioned before, we were like maximum seven or eight students. At my second year, there was 10 of us. We had a WhatsApp group. So we gathered like uh, every two months, I guess. Like we got, went somewhere and stuff like this. But um, like normally like all of us are graduated now uh, except me so like we had something like this but i'm not sure if we have it right now a lot of students uh, entered coach in 2019 from azerbaijan and since we all came together we kind of stayed together to not feel lonely and eventually we actually all became friends 
So yeah, we actually meet. And even though we are in Azerbaijan right now and you know, coach is not here, we do meet every month or two, even though the university is still not there. So I think that uh, a lot of Azerbaijani students are coming right now in coach. And I think it's not, it's not gonna be hard to find new friends since in the beginning of your, the orientation week, you're actually put together and you can meet Azerbaijanis there. And actually, I think that the, one of the biggest benefits of being an Azerbaijani student after 2019, as I understood, is the fact that you're actually coming with a lot of new Azerbaijani friends that you can meet. Great. That's, that I'm really happy. I'm really happy to hear that you are even meeting back home, you know, so that's that's very nice to hear. Anyone else would like to share what, you know, in your view, what's the best thing about being an Azerbaijani student at Coach? Is there anything? <laughs> and also the other best thing was that like, um, because like Azerbaijani language and the Turkish language is really similar and the cultures are really similar. So there wasn't a big culture shock when you, when I like personally moved to Turkey because I already spoke Turkish. It was like a, really the best part of it because I can't imagine going to Spain and being around Spanish like students and everyone is talking in Spanish and you don't understand anything so like being in Turkey was like good thing I guess and um, I would like to add to the friends part it's not only about quantity but about quality here because if you find a friend from Azerbaijan at coach that means you can be with them both during your academic year and during the summer. I mean, if you're staying in Azerbaijan during the summer and that creates really strong and long lasting friendships. So even one or two people like that will be very close friends to you. Very true. <laughs> That's great. Um, we're gonna go now back to some specific questions about major. So we have another question here for uh, Javidan for regarding medicine. Does Coach University medical students go to other governmental, for example, governmental hospitals for practice practicals in their last three years of studies apart from Coach Hospital? Um, to be honest, uh, I don't exactly know that because I'm still a second year student. But as I know, from third, fourth, uh, from fourth, fifth, and sixth year, you are completely in the hospital. So. You're not gonna come back to the main campus. It's sad, but this is the way it is. We're all day in the hospital, and I mean, I have been in, the, I have seen the hospital, and I, I have not completely, but met the members there, faculty members. Like for me, I wouldn't prefer to go to another hospital to do internship than from Coach Hospital. But if you want, uh, I think so. Uh, it's uh, in six year, final year, you can do it. I'm not totally sure because I'm still a pre pre in preclinical year. Uh, that's why I don't know yet, but I think you can do it six year because six year is completely intern year. I mean, you do uh, internship. I, I know the answer for these questions because I received lots of similar questions before I make a research about it. I can answer in this way. And also I can correct one thing like Coach University uh, Hospital is also a governmental hospital, or let me put it in this way, like in any medical school, even state university medical schools are not governmental hospitals. Like governmental hospitals in Turkey are for public. It's not research uh, hospitals. They are not research hospitals. And all the research hospitals for medicine students, they are all the same. Like for example, Istanbul University's medical school hospital is not something different than Koç University Hospital because they are both under same category as research hospitals for medicine students. That's why there isn't any differences in terms of the curriculum, in terms of the uh, procedures to for the patients or the, for the medicine students. That's why it's all the same. And also as Javidan said, like for by law, any medicine student in Turkey cannot make a different internship for their fourth and fifth years. They cannot make it because their curriculum is obliged to the hospitals they are uh, participated as a research students for medicine. But after the sixth year, when you are about to graduate or right after graduate, you can uh, get an internship in any hospital you wish. This is the real story about it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Javidan and Efe. Uh, we have a question here about the research experiences that I think Raul was um, talking about earlier. So if you know, there could be a bit more detail about that, uh, if you have information about maybe classmates or friends who are in years ahead who have done um, other 
research, I mean, what type of research experience do you think you can gain at Koch University before you graduate? I mean, I have many classmates who are doing research and pretty much all that research is in the research labs on campus. So you find a professor who most often teaches one of your courses or maybe some professor um, whose work you're a fan of um, and you email them or you approach them and um, you try to get into their lab. You will not always be accepted because there's an upper limit on how many undergraduate assistants they may have. But if you knock on um, many enough doors, you will get into a research lab. The main issue is not being afraid of approaching the professors. That is the issue I faced in the first semester because my classmates on the first day of classes in September, they already approached professors. And I thought, okay, I'm a freshman. What can I contribute to these labs? But that's the kind of thinking that you need to um, throw away because you're there to learn, basically. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else? If not, then um, I'm also wary of the time to make sure that we, we sort of close around the time we um, promised to. Um, there are some practical but very um, important questions here. For example, uh, regarding living uh, situations here. So for example, uh, do you recommend staying in dorms or renting an apartment close to the university? And another question, how has living alone affected you if you're living alone, for example? Would anyone like to give their, if, if maybe you first stayed in dorms then in an apartment or other way around, uh, how would you compare the, the experience, pros and cons? Please, Farid. Uh, I can say that I lived uh, in dorm and also I lived alone in home. Uh, I have uh, experience in both sides. But uh, the advantage of the staying dorm is you close to the faculties and uh, you can do everything easily. And uh, also the dorm, um, how can I say, the station is uh, making you studying hard because you are seeing uh, students, uh, how can I say, library, and you want to study. But if you go home, you don't want to study, and you go, you want to go outside. For me, it's like that. So that I stayed uh, in four years to the storm, and uh, at weekend I am going to home, and I prefer to stay in dorm in order to prepare hard. Any opposing views to that? You know, kind of saying it's better to stay in an apartment rather than dorms, or also, yeah, I do have you, an oh, sorry. sorry, sorry. Also, uh, if you have car. It's a problem, parking problem is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting. I actually have an opposing view and I'm sorry that I had to turn off my camera. I had to switch to my phone. I'm sorry about that. Um, I've actually stayed at the dormitory for one year, uh, but now, I mean, obviously it's online, but when I, hopefully, if we ever come back, <laughs> um, I want to rent a house because uh the dormitory it actually differs um like the the extent of your comfort differs according to the dorm you're in um for example i stayed at batu like western campus uh that is exactly where all the other houses are located where you can rent you you'll see when you come yourself so for me it, there was not much difference in terms of traveling to the university if i'm staying in batu or in a house next to batu because you know it was all the same why i wouldn't prefer dorms is because um um, that I personally had a shared bathroom and um, a shared corridor and it was only a personal room that was not that comfortable for me but it, it again depends on uh, the amount of money you're willing to um, pay for your accommodation um, costs so I think that's what differs but I personally would prefer a home for you know reasons of hygiene and such. Okay thank you that's that's what we want to hear different different experiences here. Um, there is a question here about uh, medicine. What are the most challenging courses for a medical student? I know you're in your second year, Yavidan, but uh, from your experience and maybe what you've heard from friends uh, in, in subsequent years. Well, uh, as I heard from my friends and my parents and from everybody, 
uh, second year of medicine is the hardest one because basically what you learn is human. I mean, you learn everything about human in the second year. From third year, you start pathology. I mean, in the second year, you just learn every basic stuff, no pathology. That's why the second year is the hardest and which class is hardest. I mean, uh, as in Turkey overall, not in just coach, uh, in medicine, we don't have courses. We have blocks, which has seven to eight courses in each one. And this block is for one month, for example. And in for one month or 1.5 months, it differs. And in a year, we have six blocks. This is also called komite in Turkish, but in English it's blocks. Mm -hmm. So in six blocks, in each block, you learn about specific system. For example, till now, I learned about uh, musculoskeletal system. I learned about hearts, arteries and veins, and I learned about bones. This is the three blocks from first semester. And in second semester, I will learn about digestive system and the old order stuff. The hardest, uh, I mean, course, I can't say really because <laughs> all of them are challenging. Hardest uh, block I can say is circulatory block. I mean, about hearts, arteries and veins, you learn the structure, you learn the function, you learn physiology, histology of it and everything. And all of my other colleagues and other friends from the third year and fourth year, they all say that the circulatory block is hardest, in, even in the th three years of medicine in coach, it's hardest. That's all what can I say. And in the first year, I want to add, uh, we don't see, as a medical student, we don't see any um, medicine related stuff. What I mean by that is uh, we don't see anatomy, we don't see physiology. And I think it's good. It's only in coach, as I know, mm -hmm. uh, all of the other universities are starting from anatomy. I first, when I came, I was like frustrated. Why don't we see that? And like, I was thinking it's bad, but right now I realize it's good. If you ask why, in first year, you see, like I took all the core classes. Right now, I'm not taking any core classes. I'm specifically um, focused on medicine and this is good. But other universities, for example, you're taking anatomy, then you're going to history class, then you're doing the uh, mathematics class, then you're going again to physiology. This is a little bit uh, shaky, shaky, I can say, I can put it that way. In, for example, me, I saw everything in the first year, I finished it. Now, just focused on medicine, I think it's, it's very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the system is very good. Okay. So you're not, you're, your mind is not going to somewhere else. That's mm -hmm. what I want to say. And it's not exactly a pre-med as, as, for example, is the case at, at some American universities in the sense that our first year of medicine really it's the kind of liberal arts curriculum. So um, the, I guess the core courses you were taking were not, I mean, there were some related to biology, uh, but... Yeah, yeah, of course. What I mean by not related to medicine is like, it's not anatomy and stuff. It's about genetics. It's about chemistry, little bit biochemistry. But uh, majorly, it's core classes. Mm -hmm. So the ones that you finish, that the ones that you need to finish to get your diploma. That's why. Yeah. That's all. Thank you, Davida. Um, with this question, I would like to finish the panel, and then we're going to talk very briefly about the the kind of admissions and scholarship questions because we have received a lot of questions about scholarships, um, and I think it's a great question to finish today's panel. So. Um, what's your number one advice to make a to be a successful student during uh, your university years, as far as you have seen for now? So again, I'm going to ask everyone to answer this question. So your number one advice, based on you know the things you have learned so far, um, and I'll start this time with the uh, sign up. Um, I think the main thing is time management. You have to find time for everything. You can't just study all day. You have to find time for like entertainment, to spend time with your friends, just to keep your sane uh, and also study and get your grades. I think the time is like the most essential thing. Thank you, Sena. Uh, I'm going to go down now on my screen to Raul. Uh yeah, my advice is work smart, not hard, because um, like I worked hard, but not smart in first month of my studies. And that didn't really pay off. I mean, um, sometimes taking too many notes is wrong because uh, you waste too much time 
sometimes in math focusing on theory too much instead of practice is wrong because then you're just blanking during the exam so you must constantly monitor whether you really understand something and adjust your studies to that you cannot just you know i will study every page of this textbook and i'll get an a that doesn't work in university so that would be my advice great thank you um farid Uh, could you tell me again, please? Yeah, so what's your number one advice as a student to make, to be a successful student during university years? Actually, as my friends say, uh, working hard, but with smartly, not wasting time as taking notes. And also uh, don't miss a class um, because I have uh, such a situation if you miss class uh, you will lose everything if you if you lose if you miss one class you will lose every uh, controlling things in one class so uh, i would prefer also uh, interacting with uh, professor asking question in order to uh, focusing on the uh, team them thank you that's important actually to say yeah. you have to attend classes yeah, because I'm. Uh, if you don't ask anything, uh, you can. Uh, how can I say? Lose your control, and uh, you can stay waste one hour mm -hmm. in class. That's why. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna ask now, Jamila. Um, you know, it's again a, a type of question where I have to decide and I'm not good at that. <laughs> um, I would just agree with all of my friends and especially Zainab because, uh, and, and Raul and Kari too, but um, I think it's very important to um, have a social life uh, on like one side other than your professional academic um, ca career, your life. So I, I'd really advise to, you know, in the classes that you take, in the clubs that you join, uh, focus on making friends and networking as well, other than just, you know, getting knowledge out of it. So I think that's just an ad. Great. Thank you very much, Amelia. Um, Aishan, Ibrahim, and I'm not sure if her connection is great. In the meantime, then I'll ask Narmi, your number one okay. advice about something that I actually have experienced when I first came to coach the first two like one or two weeks you're kind of getting used to the way that lessons are working so you might not really take that period of time seriously because you're like getting used to know the professors but one thing that you have to keep in mind is that it's not the way our schools have worked so the professors actually start lesson on the very first day of the university so you will not even understand how fast the midterms come so I did not really understand how fast that happened and you're like blink and that's it that's the midterm is coming and you're not ready for that so what i would advise is that from the first day understand that everything is just taking way more serious in university that is in school and try to pay attention on every single class don't think that the first class is not important or the first week is not important so if you just stick with that i think that's that's the most like common advice that i can give thank you very much Norman. That, that's that's very common, you know, like if you're coming uh, from a different system where the first week, second week is get to know each other. I don't think no, here is just right to the first kind of part of the curriculum. So it's yeah, great advice. Um, Fasil, would you like to share your number one advice? Um, my my friends actually perfectly summed up everything. I, I don't even know what to add. I'll, I'll say sleep, actually sleep because I haven't slept. <laughs> <laughs> for a while like because of my time management for my first year i procrastinated i mean don't repeat my mistakes it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you're going to be bad maybe you're good at it at procrastinating you can get <laughs> you can still get high grades but don't do it and also move because i feel it now because it's quarantine sports swimming pools everything's closed i can't do anything and when you don't move you get sleepy you're like you're sitting at a lecture you want to fall asleep and can't focus just at least once a day you can run or anything, like even for 40 minutes and you're going to be fine. Great. That's also very important. Thank you, Fatih. Um, Aishan, up to Eva. Uh, yes, for me, two things is very important. First one is attending the class. It's very important. And second one, as Zainab said, um, managing your time. 
Uh, in my opinion, you should make time for fun, for study and for travel as well, and also for sleep. And um, for me, it's useful to use app for a Pomodoro system. For example, I study for two hours and then uh, like have fun, uh, talk with friends and watch Netflix or something else. It's helpful for me. Thank you, Aisha. You um, mentioned something that someone asked on the question. So uh, I'm gonna then do a final quick round of show of hands. So last but not least, Javidan. Well, Azil already mentioned that, but I wanna say procrastination. <laughs> Especially if you're coming for medicine, like know that, never procrastinate. Even one day, for example, I can give an example of myself. Uh, it was my birthday. Like I just took three days off and then everything got, just got messed up. Like I couldn't <laughs> keep up with the program and it, it was so hard for like one week. It was so hard. Okay. Like I was sleeping four or five hours a day and it was so hard. Never procrastinate. Great. Thank you. Um, last question here was how much time do you spend studying on an average day compared to the amount you spent studying in high school? So rather than asking everyone, um, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. You know, you have your your raise hand feature on your on your panel. So um, I will say between one and three hours per day. Raise your hand. So that's outside lectures, right? Yeah, outside lectures, like that. just time studying on your own. Or with the you know your group of friends you know in a study group or something. So between one and three hours per day, we have one raised hand. Um, okay, then four to ten hours, not ten hours. I mean that's yeah, that's <laughs> four to five hours, a whole afternoon. Let's say. Let's see more hands. So it's three. Yeah. Okay. All right. More than that. The medicine student, of course. <laughs> Not surprising, but you know that's that that comes with the with the territory, and it's important to know before you take the decision to to study medicine. So thank you. I, I think with that we have closed the questions that are more you know for our students related to their experience. We do have questions about scholarships, which we know are crucial and very important as you're thinking about your choice of universities and programs, and about the admission criteria based on SAT scores. What I would like to kindly ask you is um, check our website because we will have upcoming webinars where we talk specifically about admissions and about um, scholarships. So the important thing to know is that we do have scholarships for international students, including students from Azerbaijan, of course. Uh, those scholarships are based on academic merit. What we mean by academic merit is not just your SAT score, whether, whether that's SAT 1, SAT 2, or your IB diploma score, but it's a combination of everything that you present to the, to the college admissions committee. So they will take into consideration your high school GPA, which courses you took in high school, the, of course, your standard test scores that you provide with your application, the recommendation letter, the motivation letter, uh, extracurriculars you might have done, any specific achievements or awards within school or outside of school that you can uh, talk about in your application. Um, and basically anything that helps them see that you're a well-rounded individual that has, that has the potential to not just cope with university life, but succeed and thrive. And our, our students today are an example of that. It doesn't mean they're perfect, that they don't make mistakes, um, that they haven't struggled as they have all shared with you. But you know, uh, it shows to me that our admissions committee at the college are doing the right thing because all of them through their experiences have shown that you know, they're doing really, really well at university. And I think uh, this is my reading from hearing you is that um, you have enjoyed it and are enjoying it, you know. So uh, I hope that briefly answers the question. But again, um, my colleague Efe will be organizing more um, webinars in the coming months, specifically for applicants from Azerbaijan, in which we can go into more detail about how to prepare the application, how to make sure all of your documents are, you know, um, eligible for evaluation and everything else you might like to know. And of course, please do check our website, but please know that we do have scholarships uh, based on academic merit and those scholarships, uh, uh, you know, they covered the tuition for the, the university uh, 
studies, uh, either partially or fully. So I hope that answers the question. With that, um, I know it's now Friday at 6.30. I, you know, I hope some of you, I, maybe some of you are gonna go back to studying. I don't know, I don't think so. You were on spring break, but um, I do hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much again for uh, having helped us today to answer these really interesting questions. To our participants or attendees, thank you so much for joining and staying with us. Um, and we all hope you have a good weekend. Efe, do you want to say any uh, parting words? Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, all participants. And also special thanks to you guys, our panelists, like our existing students. It's an amazing to do that. We cannot answer, we cannot cover those topics without you because we learn from you as well. Like, thank you so much. It was very helpful. It was very, uh, like, we appreciate a lot to being here with you today. So with that, uh, yeah, would anyone like to say any last, um, not last words, but you know, like. <laughs> I would like to take, say thank you for uh, giving this chance to talk with them and making this organization, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Very okay. So with that, we're going to close today's um, webinar. So we hope you have a good weekend. Stay safe and healthy. I, I've heard now Baku is sort of going back to normal. So enjoy that, <laughs> those of you who are in Baku. Um, and hopefully we'll see you in Istanbul this September, uh, some of you who are uh, joining us today. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.